All right, today we're working on a 2009 Toyota Corolla. We're doing the front and rear axle, front and rear, driver's side and passenger side axles. To Corolla, Toyota from Utah. Okay, so the first thing you need to do, I'm gonna do the passenger side. I already did the driver's side. The driver's side is a little bit harder than the passenger side because of the way the the uh, CV axle goes into the transmission. I'll show you that when I get there. But the first thing you need to do is gain a access to your axle nut. Your axle nut is right here. Right here where this keyway is, the, um, the nut is usually divoted or pushed in, punched in right there. So we need to get that punch or where the area is punched in. We need to, uh, I want to say unpunch that so that we can get uh, the nut off. And you want to do the nut with the wheel on the ground right where my knife is right there that there's an indentation on the axle nut to go with the keyway we need to get the indentation out so we can actually turn the nut and get it off the nut on this particular car is a 30 30 millimeter you need a 12 point socket it's best if you have a 30 millimeter 12 point deep i only have a 12 millimeter 30 millimeter 12 point short so you can use a screwdriver this uh this one i used on the uh, driver's side got busted up cheap piece of junk from i don't know where this is from i think it's from home depot i don't know workforce piece of junk so it disintegrated when uh, i started tapping on the handle but i still have this metal piece and i just need a small piece of metal to go in there and get under the uh divot indentation so I can get it up. So I'm going in there. Got a ball peen hammer. It's best if you wear eye protection when you do this. Okay, looks like that nut has moved a little bit. I'll get a 30 millimeter socket. Okay, so you need a 12 point socket. This is a 30 millimeter. Pick this up from O'Reilly Auto Parts. 30 millimeter. This is a short though, so if you can get a deep one, it'll work a little bit better or make it a little bit easier. And I have a half inch breaker bar. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. And you need to do this with the wheel on the ground because it'll have a tendency to want to spin. I need the e-brake on. If you have a ratchet, you can get out that way. Or keep working it by hand with your half inch breaker bar. Or if you have air, access to air like I do, you can go ahead and get a gun and break it off, get, the, get it out the rest of the way that way. The new axle comes with a new nut, so no need to worry about that. Next we'll get these 21 millimeter lug nuts off and get the wheel off. Okay, so your jacking point for the vehicle, for this Corolla, is going to be right behind the front wheel. There's two pieces of metal that come together, you'll see it. It sits right there. You don't want to jack it on this plastic piece or you'll damage that plastic. So, not having the right spot, I'll go ahead and take the tire off. Place the wheel under the front, just in case anything happens. But I'll also bring in a floor jack. Okay, got my jack in place. I want to keep it off the lower control arm because I need I need that to articulate when I get to that next crucial part. So the axle nut is loose. Next thing we need to do, right here, control rod. This is part of the steering rack, goes into the knuckle. Then you have three bolts down here. Let's see, right here, three bolts, 17 millimeter, that we need to remove. Now's a good time to check your brake pads. Check your rotor, make sure there's no discoloration, any bluing. This has a little bit of bluing. Somebody is riding these brakes pretty hard. So, there's a cotter pin right here. 
It's always a good idea to re to get a new carter pin. There's the old one. It should be a 17 millimeter as well. Yep, 17 millimeter. So I'll bring this in and get my gun ready, tidy, lefty, loosey. If you don't have a gun, you can always use hand tools. Got that off. Right there, there's a hole. And that hole and these uh, cuts line up and that's uh, where you put the cotter pin through. But it only lines up, you only line it up after it's been tightened. So, there's that little fun fact. All right, right down here, as we have these bolts, actually two nuts and one bolt. This one farthest right here, that's the bolt. These two are nuts. They are 17 millimeter. Seventeen millimeter, but we need to get this loose as well. So, so we need to get this uh, lower control arm out. Not lower control arm. This um, ball joint loose. They can be really tight. So you need to take a hammer and try to hit it this way. Give it a couple love taps here. And if that doesn't work, then we will take our castle nut. That's what it's called. Castle nut. We'll put it back on top here because you don't want to damage these threads. We'll go ahead and put it on top here, and then take our hammer. And hit the castle nut because you don't want to mushroom out the head, the the uh, threads on the on the actual um, on the actual bolt. But let's see if I can get it loose this way. The other time, the other side, I had to hit it from the top. But if you're gonna hit it, hit it right here. That'll get a lot of room. I don't think that did crap. Nope, didn't do nothing. All right, so I'm gonna start hitting the castle nut. Let's see if that can get it loose that way. Okay. Came through. There we go, it's out. Now we work on these, uh, these nuts and bolts down here. 17 millimeter. Righty tighty lefty loosey. There's one, two. And just remember when you put everything back together, you gotta line up the lower control arm and the knuckle so everything lines up. And when you put this back in, you wanna start with the bolt first because that needs to line up correctly before you put the, uh, before you put the nuts on. Line up the bolt first and then put your nuts on. Okay, they're all out. We gotta get this um, separated from the lower control arm. As you push down on the knuckle, on the lower control arm, pull up on your, on your knuckle. And you have them free. Okay, back of the axle. Here's the front of the axle. Now while I keep this castle nut on, not this, the axle nut on, I'll take a hammer and I'll actually hit this to be able to get the axle loose inside the knuckle. And once I have that loose, I can go in there, pull it from this side, and uh, make sure everything's good. Okay, now I'll take my ball peen hammer, just tap it here. And it's loose, it's coming out. If you find any of my videos helpful, please consider subscribing to Bunny's Garage on YouTube. Questions, comments, concerns, you can always reach out to me at bunniesgarage at gmail.com. You can follow me on Twitter. Check out my new website. And like always, I'll keep them rolling for you. You don't want to mushroom this head because if you mushroom this head, it won't go through the knuckle. So if this is really stuck on there, you need to get penetrating oil or uh, some heat. Maybe from an oxy settling torch or a propane torch or a map gas torch. Now I'm getting a uh, punch. Just knocking it out that way. Okay. <laughs> CV joint is free. Okay, now we have to go on the inside here and separate from the, trans the CV axle from the transmission. 
That's the part I had a hard time on the driver's side. Get my trusty dusty screwdriver and my pry bar. So we're in the depths of the Toyota Corolla here. So right here, that's your CV. This is where it connects to the transmission, right down here. Right there. And so we need to get a screwdriver between there and the transmission, or there between the CV and the transmission to get it free and clear. Now let me get a pan to catch any uh, transmission fluid that comes out. Put that directly underneath where the transmission and the CV meet up, that CV axle meet up. Passenger side, it's probably easier than the driver's side because you have a clear shot right to the CV boot, which is right here, or CV axle, I should say. Yep, got it free. Okay, so it's a little bit of love taps with the screwdriver and the hammer. Next thing you want to do, there's a clip on the end right here. You want to make sure that that clip comes off with the CV axle, with the axle that doesn't stay inside the transmission. All right, everything looks good there. So now it'll be just a matter of getting the new axle, putting it in there. Make sure it seats correctly, and we'll be good to go. So you gotta move the knuckle a little bit, pull it straight out. Okay, with the old one out, the new one's still in the box, I just laid the old one on top of the new one, made sure everything fits correctly, everything's lining up. And it appears to be, everything seems good, good. See, there's the end of the new one, Here's the old one. You can't put these in wrong because, well, I guess you could put it in wrong. Just know that the splines are on the side that goes into the transmission. You have the threaded part that goes out towards the knuckle, towards the tire wheel. That's where you put the uh, axle nut on, so. Yeah, I don't think you put it in backwards, but just in case. <clears throat> also, if there's a core on some, there's a core on some CV axles. You have to put it back in the original box so don't destroy the box. The yellow, I did that. I painted it just because I wanted to paint it. I don't even know if it's dry. Yeah, it's dry enough. Line everything up. I'm back underneath the car now. Makes it a little bit easier to move this thing around. Love you too. All right, you guys can't see it. Oh, maybe you see my finger right there. Now, once you have this lined up and got it in the kind of the right place, sometimes you give it a love tap, the end of the axle love tap. And what I mean by that is we'll uh, get a piece of wood and we'll hit the threaded part of the axle on the end towards the wheel. And that should seat, seat the axle in the transmission. So let me give that a shot real quick. I'll keep you up there so you guys can see it. Actually, I'll bring you guys over here. It actually comes with new castle nuts, but I'm actually taking the new one off and putting the old one on so I don't bugger up the new one. And it feels like it went into place. And I think I got it. Just know sometimes it's not that easy. Sometimes you gotta really work at it and wiggle it around and all kinds of crazy stuff. Pray to the axle gods that it goes in correctly, but you can see that it's seated and flush now with the uh, transmission. The CV and the CV axle and transmission are flush now, so we are good to go and we can uh, reinstall everything. All right, so this is the old axle nut. I just used it to push in the, uh, push in the axle. Sometimes the axles don't come with new nuts, 
So if that was the case that you need to push this in, you could just get a small piece of wood up against the threads. The last thing you want to do is damage these threads in any way. So I just get a piece of wood like that and hit the hammer right on the end of the wood and then seat the axle that way. Like I said, this went in very, very easy compared to some, some of them I've done. Hondas seem to be a little bit tougher than Toyotas. Um, insulation is reverse of removal. So now I'll bring in the knuckle, guide this back into the knuckle, into the hole right there. Bring in my ball joint. If this, if this, if you have a hard time, if you have a difficult time trying to get this to, uh, the nut to uh, seat down all the way, sometimes there's an Allen key inside there. This one doesn't have it. This one must, this is original from Toyota. Sometimes there's a, uh, there's a spot right on top, right on the very top, right where my finger's at, that allows you to put an Allen key in there so you can actually hold it, put the nut on and get a wrench and tighten it down. If there is, if this is spinning on you when you're trying to tighten it up, you can always put pressure from the bottom, get a piece of wood, lower the vehicle down, get a piece of wood and have the piece of wood, once it's back into here, and then put a little bit of pressure on there so it'll hold tight and you can get the uh, get the nut back on. And don't forget the cotter pin that goes into the hole lined up with the castle nut. All right? Um, we need to guide in the lower control arm, which isn't hard. Once you get the, the two studs into the lower control arm, uh, go ahead, put your nut in, guide it in, put that one in first, and then your two nuts. Tighten this down until you can't tighten it down anymore. And then make sure you put, uh, this one has the indentation as well, the keyway. Once the, the new nut is on, go ahead and get a chisel or a screwdriver and make sure you punch a hole, not punch a hole, but punch a divot into the new axle nut so that the axle nut will not come off. Something. What is that thing? Jeez. Did you get it? Yeah, I got it. 